So before anything else, let me introduce to the topical workbook for computer science 2210-0478. This is the workbook one for, for paper one, basically computer systems. And as you can see from the table of contents, I've included questions on each and every subtopic from the syllabus along with the mark scheme. And these are some of the actual questions, actual pages uh, as a preview from the workbook section 1.1, 1.3, 2.2, 3.2, 2, 5.3 cyber security and artificial intelligence. This is just to show you a glimpse of what type of questions are included in the workbook. There are many 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 more questions where these come from and around 18 to 20 questions on an average are included for each and every topic. A must buy if you want to boost your grade. Similar to the paper one workbook, I have designed a paper workbook for paper two as well. This is for algorithm programming and logic uh, for CIEs either 2210 or 0478 GCE or IGCSE computer science. As you can see, it contains questions on every subsection of the syllabus content for paper two along with the mark scheme so you can understand each and every question each and every um, algorithm these are some of the few pages from the workbook just to give you a glimpse of what type of questions are included as you can see this is 7.1 this is 7.7 8.3 and section 10 boolean logic so um, a lot more questions are included in the workbook a must buy if you want to have a very good score in your Cambridge examination order now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh I hope you guys are doing fine so today we are going to start a new section of the O levels physics syllabus that is section number four electricity and magnetism without further to do let's start our discussion for section 4.1 that is simple simple magnetism and magnetic fields so what exactly is magnetism it is the fundamental property of matter it is one of the most basic properties of matter which is also related to electricity they both go hand in hand a magnetic field is produced when an electric charge move around. Common materials for magne magnets are iron, steel, cobalt and nickel. They are suitable to make magnets due to their atomic structure. Now uh, here is a simple description of uh, an atom, a carbon atom to be exact. No now you can see that inside an atom there is always a nucleus and that nucleus consists of neutrons which have no charge and protons which have a positive charge outside the nucleus electrons are moving around uh, having a negative charge now over here one two three four five six there are six uh, protons and one two three four five six six electrons so this material uh, this uh, carbon is balanced it has an overall uh, zero charge or no net charge because the electrons and protons are balanced but in a material where electrons and protons would not be balanced either the uh, material would have a positive charge or a negative charge so due to the charge on the electrons the movement of electrons will give rise, rise to a magnetic effect these magnetic effect can be seen as tiny atomic magnets the tiny magnets occur in uh, this tiny magnet effect occurs in all substances but due to their atomic structure they may not uh, not every material behave as a magnet there is uh, attraction between electrons and protons in every material in every ma all the matter in every atom but Due to the atomic structure, not every uh, metal or every material can behave like a magnet. In a non-magnetic material, most of the material around us are non-magnetic, the electrons are arranged in configuration that they result in the magnetic effect cancelling out one another. Like over here, the number of electrons and protons are balanced, so they would have zero net 
magnetic effect the negative charge of electron is being cancelled out by the positive charge of proton once these tiny magnet atomic magnets are aligned properly they will give rise rise to a strong combined magnetic effect and the substance is considered to be magnetized and is uh, known as a proper magnet now the material that naturally occurs and is a magnet as well which is something that is na that naturally behaves as a magnet is a material known as lodestone however magnetic materials like steel and iron can be converted into magnets through magnetization now what are the properties of magnets all magnets have two poles a north pole and a south pole well they are known as that because if you hang a magnet magnet uh, freely um, held by a piece of a string in the center and let it hang freely then one of its pole will always point towards the north that is known as the north seeking pole or a north pole and the other one is known as a south seeking pole or a south pole the magnetic strength is the strongest at the poles of the magnet and is re relatively weak in the middle when you freely suspend a bar this is just the experiment i just uh, uh, described this is happens because the earth is a magnet itself so the magnet when it is freely hanged it uh, reacts to the magnetic field of the earth and aligns itself like poles always repel and unlike poles always attract this is the law of magnetism that you should know only uh, and only different poles unlike poles like north will only attract south north and north and south and south will always repel each other magnets attract magnetic materials such as iron steel cobalt and nickel the stronger a magnet the larger will be the attractive force or repulsive force between other magnet um, uh, magnetic materials or magnets the closer together the two magnets are the greater would be their resultant magnetic force cutting a bar magnet into smaller pieces would simply produce more magnets each having their individual north and south pole there is no such thing as a magnet with only one pole so if you break a magnet it would simply give rise to two or three smaller magnets having their own north and south pole now there's some fun little thing to know that earth has a giant magnet basically the core inside the earth is uh, consists of iron and nickel which keeps on spinning and it produces a magnetic effect or uh, the north pole of the earth is actually the south pole of the magnet for the uh, for the earth's core that is why the north pole or the of a magnet when hanged freely always points to it so basically the place or the point uh, pole of the earth which we call as the north pole is uh, actually uh, by definition is the uh, south pole for the earth's magnet and vice versa with the south pole now a, mag a magnetic material is uh, any matter that can be attracted by a magnet or simply in simple terms a magnet would uh, stick to it they can be made into magnets either temporary or permanent by using magnetization non magnetic materials are matter that is not attracted by magnets nor by any uh, method can you turn them into a magnet for example wood plastic and metals such as copper and brass whereas magnetic materials can be iron steel nickel cobalt and many alloys that are based on these metals now how do you perform the act of magnetism and convert something into a magnetic material this process is known as induced magnetism or magnetization depends upon uh, what your examiner likes to call it uh, see in different boards and different books this uh, name is slightly changed somewhere it is known as induced magnetism somewhere it is known as magnetization so basically the concept is same 
so induced magnetism and electrical method of magnetization these both are included in your syllabus so you should know about them that how you can use these two uh, methods to convert something into a magnet means a ma convert a magnetic material into act like a magnet magnetic induction is one of the ways uh, that makes a magnetic that turns a magnetic material into a magnet on its own so in other words this is type of induction is a process of inducing magnetism in an ordinary piece of uh, magnetic material this method is quite simple what you basically do is you place a magnetic material such as soft iron close to a permanent magnet or close to a strong magnet S due to the effects of the strong uh, magnet the iron bar the soft iron bar slowly starts to behave just like a magnet and it uh, starts to attract other materials made out of magnetic materials hence the soft iron bar is attracted and attached to the permanent magnet and magnetic induction process reveals how magnetic materials can be attracted to magnets induced magnetism is a temporary process as soon as you remove the permanent magnet the induced uh, material also loses its magnetic property here is a diagram to make you explain there was a nail that is made up of iron and there are some paper pins the nail is not attracting the paper pins but once you place a permanent bar magnet and uh, touched it or attached it with this nail then it is started to attract these nails acting like a magnet because this bar magnet induced magnetism inside this magnetic material and as soon as you remove the bar magnet it lost its magnetic property and uh, the pins fell down again the next is the electrical method for magnetization again this also makes something uh, turns a magnetic material into a magnet for temporary temporarily and not permanently for magnetization a direct current flowing into a solenoid a long insulated wire coiled into a cylinder produces a magnetic field so basically uh, the ma electrical method says that take a piece of uh, iron or uh, any other magnetic material that is known as a solenoid then wrap a piece of coil around it and then connect that coil to a power source to a battery and when electricity passes through that coil wrapped around a solenoid or a magnetic material that magnetic material starts to act like a magnet now the magnetic field that is uh, produced inside that coil is uniform in the strength and direction the solenoid becomes a magnet the steel bar placed inside the coil will become magnetized due to magnetic induction from the solenoid the polarities of the magnet depends on the direction of the current flow when the direction of the current flow is reversed then the poles of the electromagnet are also reversed this method creates more powerful magnet than other magnetizing methods such as stroking now what is the difference between an electromagnet or a permanent magnet electromagnet is made up of a coil of wire whereas permanent magnet is made up of hard magnetic material Ma in electromagnet magnetism is temporary whereas uh, in permanent magnet obviously as the name suggests it is permanent and it does not require any current to behave like a magnet what are the applications of electromagnet they are used in telephones uh, electric relays uh, electric bells circuit breakers etc whereas permanent magnets are used in uh, door steps compasses uh, motors uh, loudspeakers microphones etc magnetic fields and uh, magnetic field lines a magnetic field is the region around a magnet where other magnetic materials will experience a force a magnetic field can be graphically represented by magnetic field lines which indicate its strength and direction a magnetic field is a vector quantity because it always has a direction when the field lines are close together at a point it means that 
the magnetic field is strong at that certain point. Arrows in the field lines outside the magnet show the direction in which a free north pole would move and the field lines are always in the following direction they originate from the north pole and go towards the south pole field lines never cross over so if you are di drawing a diagram of uh, field lines around a magnet never overlap them either in paper 2 or either in paper 4 a compass can be used to find the direction and the strength of uh, and the pattern of magnetic field around a magnet it has a permanent magnet needle uh, which is free to rotate in a horizontal plane the north pole of compass will align and point along the magnetic field line direction the direction of a magnetic field at a point is the direction of the force on the north pole of magnet at that particular point the strength of the magnetic field is shown by the spacing between the magnetic field lines if the magnetic field lines are close together then the field is strong whereas if they are far apart then that means that magnetic field strength is weak here is uh, a diagram of magnetic field lines around a bar magnet when you have a simple bar magnet then the field lines are something like this a bit elapsed in shape they originate from north pole and they come into the south pole when two like poles are together then the lines are like this because they ha are having attraction when two um, similar poles or like poles are close together then the field lines are simply bent producing an empty region with no magnetic effect in between Nev however please note that if you have a diagram like this in your paper never explain it like the field lines are uh, pushing against each other they are the field lines originating from this north pole are simply trying to go towards the south pole like this they are not pushing against each other never say that this would be wrong answer in such case uh, so anyways and simply remember that the area between the like poles does not have any magnetic uh, field in between this is known as a neutral zone and if you want to measure magnetic field strength then you can use a tesla meter for that plotting of magnetic field lines as uh, you can have two uh, methods for doing that or two experiments to do that uh, the first method is by using a compass and how you can do that you are going to need a bar magnet a paper and a compass what you do is you place the bar magnet in the center of the paper and then uh, so that the north pole is aligned Place the compass near one pole of the magnet and mark the position of the need ends north and south of the compass needle by pencil dots. Then move the compass until the end of the compass is over the second dot and mark the new position with a third dot and so on. Like this. Like first of all you would place a compass over there and then you would place two dots. One here and one here. Then move your compass ahead then place a third dot and then next then next then next then next then next similarly you do it downwards draw as many field lines as you like repeat the above until reaching the other pole join the series of dots and this will give a field line of magnetic field use this method to plot other field lines on both sides of this magnet means the upper and the lower side the next, uh, the next method is plotting of magnetic field lines with iron filings. Place a sheet of paper on top of a bar magnet and sprinkle iron filings thinly and evenly onto the paper. Tap the paper gently with a pencil and the filings should form patterns showing the lines of force or the magnetic field lines. Each filing turns in the direction of the field when the paper is tapped. This method is quick but not very useful for weak magnetic fields if you do not have a very strong math magnet at your disposal this method will not work when you tap the paper something like this would be produced as you can see over here the magnetic field is strong as you can see most of the iron filings are close together over here whereas like over here they are far apart indicating the 
magnetic field is close uh, is weak over here then uh, okay temporary and permanent magnets so iron can be easily magnetized or demagnetized uh, soft it is a soft magnetic material it can even be magnetized by a weak magnetic field hence it is uh, more useful as a temporary magnet when it is mixed with other materials such as nickel copper manganese or uh, silicon powerful temporary magnets can be made these temporary magnets are used to make temporary electromagnets and uh, they lose their magnetism as soon as the power is switched off electromagnets are very useful because they can be turned on and off and their strengths can be varied in order to shield or contain any magnetic effect soft permeable iron is also used as a effective magnetic shield electromagnets can be used for such task as moving cars or sorting material from other landfill sites other applications are in circuit breaker magnetic relays electric bells audio and video tapes transformers your hard disk drive etc permanent magnets are made up of hard materials such as steel because they cannot be easily magnetized or demagnetized they can only be magnetized by a very strong magnetic field and uh, they once magnetized they would retain their magnetic capabilities this trait allows steel to to be a suitable uh, material to make a permanent magnet it is typically mixed with other materials to ensure structural stability for example they are used in compasses magnetic door catchers moving coil galvan uh, galvanometers galvanometer is a um, is a device is a meter that can be used to measure very small currents uh, uh, dc motors ec generators loudspeakers etc example question a steel rod is magnetized using an electrical method describe how this is done well you may wish to draw a diagram if you wish you will have to draw a diagram and it should look something like this remember when the examiner says you may do something he is actually hinting that you are supposed to do that thing and then there are always marks for that doing that task in the mark scheme so don't just leave it out thinking that oh the examiner said you may so i do not have to do it if i don't want to that is a trap so you have to draw a diagram uh, like this and uh, write the description that wrap a coil around a metal rod and pass some current through it and voila you have your electromagnet describe how you can check that the steel rod is magnetized simply bring some um, uh, either you bring some paper pens to it if they stick to it that means you have a magnet or bring a both hands of a bar magnet close to it one of the one of the hands should uh, stick to it whereas the other one should repel it one end of each of two bars is marked with an x or y as shown and x of bar 1 is brought close to the north pole and then south pole of a magnet whereas end of y this one is brought close to the north and south pole of an of a permanent magnet the table shows what happens north pole of magnet and x was attracted and y was also attracted and when it was brought to the uh, south pole and x of bar 1 was again attracted whereas and y was repelled what materials are bar 1 and 2 made from now from this table we can see that no matter which end was brought uh, to uh, closer to bar 1 it was always attracted that means this is a magne uh, magnetic material and not a magnet itself now for bar 1 we have copper iron steel steel copper is not a magnetic material and steel is supposed to be a very strong magnetic material so it cannot be steel so it has to be b iron let's just check for bar 2 as well now it says that bar 2 was attracted to the north pole of a magnet but it repelled the south pole of a magnet that means it should have the properties of a permanent magnet itself it basically means uh, bar 2 is a permanent magnet out of these iron is not a permanent magnet neither is copper neither is iron 
only steel can be made into a permanent magnet so that means uh, our option number B is the correct answer that's it for today I know the lecture has gotten a little uh, long but I wanted to compile it into one lecture as your CI is, is approaching so I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture I hope you have understood everything if you have any 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 sort of problem confusion or issues in this topic please feel free to leave comments below if you don't have any um, confusions if you have understood everything then simply leave a thumbs up down below please share it with your friends as well and I'll see you guys in the next lecture take care Allah Hafiz